we will look at uh, x bar theory uh, where we are looking at the structure of a phrase we started with phrase structure rules and then we moved on to the structure with apparent uh, and uh, advantages that we have discussed so far okay uh, in in order to answer these questions we have uh, we have looked at this sentence and uh, when we see this phrase structure in this structure i have fixed your questions okay uh, because now we can see things more clearly so when we uh, tell me tell me again for uh, everybody this this is making sense right there are two just two simple points out of this uh, these rules that i want you to understand the algorithm is not so difficult or these names are not so difficult for you to understand like np vp and all those things the two main points here is are the following a these rules describe the sentence before right in order for us to understand the relationship among all the words in that sentence and how those words form a group and with whom and then how each group of words that is a phrase is related to one another right that is one second is these rules independently can generate infinite number of sentences with with little bit modification or not or or even when we do not modify these rules can generate lot of sentences lot of sentences of course there are limitations of these rules but these are the two points that we wanted through these rules all right then uh, this this one shows us little bit uh, clearly about these grouping of words right okay we have we have seen these things thus far and we talked about why uh, a subject is also called an inflectional phrase or a tense phrase or an agreement phrase right and and we will we'll look at it more when we reach that part then we started looking at the structure of the of the phrase in terms of their uh, binary branching that is the structure that we see now are all binary in terms of their branching i i don't have multiple branching structure on the screen but i have shown you the multiple branching structure on the board uh, which will remind you that multiple branching structure was able to tell us grouping but not much beyond that in the sense that uh, in in the sense that multiple branching have their their own limitations that uh, they don't show any sort of hierarchical configuration okay in order to capture conceptual hierarchy among phrases and units of a phrase uh, that is within the phrase the reason why this was called x bar is because there was an intermediate node created for us to understand understand this whole thing so we get three layers of representation of a particular phrase that is head then intermediate category head will be n intermediate category in, that is intermediate level n bar and then the phrasal status of the whole phrase that is np or n two bars all right and this is the this is the blueprint of structure of all the phrases and then lot of other things come into play which we are going to see that how how they become recursive and how they get connected with one another so clear so far the um, 
um, the notion of uh, this this is this whole um, set of nodes tell us about the notion of a specifier and complements as well with respect to head that is specifier by virtue of being higher than the head has a scope over both head and its complement and complements are on only uh, going to be in close proximity with their heads. This is also uh, categorically clear from these structures. Then we, we saw that sometimes we, we may not have a complement or we may have a complement. We may not have a specifier, we may have a specifier. Irrespective of their physical presence, we are going to have we, we have these spaces for them. However, we do not have a phrase if we if the head is not present. That is, without the head, we cannot conceptualize probably the phrase. So again, the the head is not significant just for its name. The whole existence of the phrase depends on head. When we when we start looking at larger phrases then we see how they are connected. So, in this NP, we see the head of this, this phrase is a noun and then a PP is its complement and then again that PP is headed by a P with an NP complement. And then we can, we can again break them uh, into its actual shape where the last NP that you see physics is not going to have its either have have its specifier and complement. Therefore, I have just put them as NP. Clear? Okay. If we start looking at the verb phrase of the sentence that you have seen, that students of physics like pizza in the evening. The whole phrase part of the part of this sentence look like this on the screen. Clear? Where in the verb phrase the head of the verb is like and then pizza is the complement of the verb mm -hmm. that is because verb is transitive in its in nature and then we see that the pp in the evening is not really the complement it has the you, you can see the you can look at the configuration and see the this is not the question of chicken and the egg there are two things again two things are prominently clear and visibly clear if you see this thing the structure tells you that the that the noun pizza is in close proximity with the verb. That is the noun, that is the noun phrase which is being subcategorized, required by the verb as its complement. And in the evening is a, a there are two, two things about the phrase in the evening. A, it is not related to pizza. If at all it has to say anything, it has to say something about the entire uh, entire uh, this part, entire this thing that is like pizza. If if this thing has to say anything, that is in the evening is talking about like pizza. Okay, therefore it is higher. And since it's not a subcategorized or a required element, this kind of thing, where you see the intermediate category an intermediate category being expanded that is another a, another of this is adjoint this this type of uh, this type of uh, uh, requirement or this type of uh, manipulation is called I, I don't mean manipulation in a negative sense this kind of manipulation of the structure is called adjunction 
where we have just another V bar adjoint which serves the purpose, gives, captures the, the way phrases are uh, conceptually available in the structure, in the deep structure of the phrase and also um, uh, captures the distinction between a complement and the adjunct. Making sense? Uh, this much uh, in very briefly in the last class we had seen in the last few minutes as well. We had we have looked at things so far and I have again uh, slowly gone over these things for us to understand how these things work. Mm -hmm. Can it be further split into yes. specifier? Yes. So the would be the specifier. The will be no this. complement and evening. Exactly. And just about the uh, preposition phase, mm -hmm. shouldn't that also be split into a specifier first and the p dash? Absolutely. And but then the blank. But yes. Even if it's blank, shouldn't we mention? It? Yes, you are right. You are right. It should be. But the reason why I haven't put them there. For, there are two reasons. A, there was not much of a space on the screen. That's one. B, I didn't. I I don't mean to underestimate your uh, your imaginations. Once you understand the structure of a phrase, but that that could be the third reason. The second, the first is there was no space here, and the second is it's a it's a general practice in the struck in when when we look at the structure. See, we look at this structure right now. We are looking at this structure because I am taking you through these things one by one for the first time. But when people look at, people draw a, a, a structure of a tree in their understanding and investigation, the standard practice by people, I mean linguists investigating a sentence, the standard practice in the field is not to draw things that are not available knowing very well that those things exist. So, your question is absolutely right and uh, I, I agree with you um, that probably when these things are presented for the first time, they should be expanded, uh, they will be nice, uh, but that is like, like I have done with the VP. Okay. And uh, also, I, I, I took little bit of liberty with this thing because I have done the PP here, right? Because we have a, a specifier, head and complement. We know not, nothing comes in the specifier of the specifier of the PP. Therefore, in the in this PP, we have just dropped that. But we 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 understand it. Do you understand the question and the answer both? Okay. So true. Uh, now, let us go and look at the whole sentence. Okay. Uh, bear with me for a moment again for the, for the purpose of the space, I have reduced the subject and I am going to show you the subject separately. Just, just, just look at how, how it is, uh, how, how the whole sentence projects itself and what is combined with what. You have seen all the way to VP, right? Now look at the whole sentence. We are calling the whole sentence an IP, right? You can you can call it anything. We, even if we call S, doesn't matter much. Uh, the 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 practices are even when you put S in the top, in the branching people go with I bar and I. The uh, the idea is not to put S bar and S. Okay, because S represents the sentence and not a phrase. So, when we call IP, what we are saying is we are considering the whole sentence as a phrase. And just like in a smaller phrase like NP or a VP, the head of the phrase is a noun or a verb. When we say the entire sentence is IP, the head of the sentence is an I, which means inflection. Okay. And in the place of inflection, here you see 
What do you see in the place of inflection? In this sentence? Which P R E S which means present tense. Okay? So, I have put only tense here. I have put only tense here. So, there could be several questions, then why do not you call it T or T P, right? The uh, again we can call that, but the point will be the same, okay? We can call it T P and then T bar and T and then everything else, does not change anything. We can, we can call it A G R P, A G R bar then in the place of I, we say AGR, right? And then put something there. I, I want you to understand conceptually a very simple thing that whatever names, whatever the name we give is not really, really important. What is important is sentence is a phrase by itself and this notion of representing or, or drawing a sentence captures the fact that in the head place of a sentence, whatever comes is the most important part of the sentence. Saying the same thing in other words, this the advantage of this structure is it clearly shows you what is the head of a sentence, what is the most important part of a sentence. Do you see, do you see the thing putting both ways? This, the advantage of this structure is it captures the important part of the sentence and it enables us to see the most significant part in a sentence, right? So, sentence itself is tenseless, yeah. not all the time. But in this, the example you oh, right, very, very true. What, what, I have, what I have told you when we discussed about tense, when we said, uh, Things like when we say like pizza, remember what I what I said is there is no tense marker present. That does not mean tense is absent, tense marker is not visible in a sentence like this and tense marker is visible in a sentence like uh, okay, so this becomes a tense marker. At, at that time what we were discussing is very simple thing, the tense is a slippery category. Okay. In, in, in the language like English, the whole notion of gender is completely zero all the time unlike our languages where we see gender appearing at the surface structure. Are you with me? Are you, are you following me? In our languages, we see gender appearing at the surface structure on the on surface. Can you give me an example of this thing? When I say in our language, we see gender appearing on the surface. Appearing on the surface, you mean there is a marker? Marker clearly visible, exactly. And, and the reason why I am taking you again slowly, because I want to clarify this, this, this point uh, in a very clear way. Anybody? So, pad raha hum, what kind of tense is visible on the verb? some sort of masculine marker, right? which tells you that the subject of the sentence is masculine. right? In a language like English, it is always going to be dormant, it is never going to be visible. I am reading, he is reading, she is reading, it is always going to be dormant. Now, the point is, it is not that there is no tense in English, it is just dormant for the purpose of grammar. It does not 
participate in grammatical process. Okay? Therefore, never surfaces. In a language like Hindi, because it participates in grammatical process, it surfaces sometimes. Okay? Similarly, in a language like English, tense is a very slippery category. Sometimes it is, it has no manifestation and sometimes it has manifestations. Right? Even here, uh, okay, so and, and this is the story only in present tense. The reason why I am calling, do, do you understand why I am calling it a slippery category? You, are you following it or not? No. So, you, you need to ask what do you mean by slippery? Okay. Only then I will know that you, it is not clear to you. I, I can figure out some things by looking at your faces, but not everything. Okay. It, slippery means it is hard to put your finger on it. Right? It is hard to catch in the sense that, see, any marker of tense here? No. Any marker of tense here? Yes. So, if this story is about, but, but we know that there is a present tense here. This sentence is present tense. Right? When I say I like pizza, the sentence is present tense. So, there is no marker of present tense, but this is abs this, there is no marker of present tense, but this is present. So, zero marker, this is clearly a present tense marker. So, in the in this in the story of present tense, sometimes it appears, sometimes it does not. In the past tense, it is always going to appear. In the future tense, it is always going to appear. So, when, when it appears sometimes and when it does not appear sometimes, that is called hard to put your finger on. Sometimes it is 0, sometimes it surfaces. Okay? Nonetheless, it is never conceptually absent. Okay? This, this is an important, important thing for you to understand. This distinction is very crucial. And when we say no tense marker, we do not mean to say no tense. We are only saying no physical marker of tense. Okay? And this kind of a structure also helps us see that that tense is available. It also helps us, there, there, are, there are several other things which I am going to show you little later. Once we are, once we have developed the whole structure of a sentence, then we will move on to see what else this kind of a structure helps us understand. Because if, if it only helps us understand nice looking picture, that is that is not enough, that that is too heavy. I'll, heavier load on human mind. Are you still with me? Okay. Any other question? So far? Sir, hmm. uh, we, we said imperative sentences. Right. We said they have no tense. So, we right. are saying that it has no tense marker. But they are truly no, no. tense. They're In tense that tense. case, there is no tense also. Here, we are saying no tense marker. In When, in, when we say tense less sentences, we, we literally mean no tense and in that kind of a structure, just tell me how will, how will the structure work? In that, in that structure, what do you see here in place of I? Present tense. In that case, you will see zero. Mm -hmm. John, first of all, it should be likes pizza mm. in the evening. Very nice. Go ahead. So, this this is showing a habit or something which is continuing. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, does this still have tense? I mean, I thought that when you say something like I live in Chennai mm -hmm. or you say he lives in Chennai, is it present tense or is it imperative uh, sentence? How many of you understand his question? Do you understand? Many people, you understand? Very, very, very nice question and very significant question. And these are the things which I sincerely request you to understand with clarity. There is absolutely no rush. We can spend time on these things. And trust me, 
once you understand these distinctions and these the 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 underlying facts of these question the, this kind of question these things are going to make more sense to you okay understand this so give me a couple of minutes to clarify this the uh, clarify his question you're right what what's the first thing that you are saying that this should be john likes pizza okay very nice when we say how about i like pizza then it would have been okay right what this is trying to show you is this s on the verb is something else that's by something else you mean something external it it tells us about something so this verb likes and and please stop me if it is stop if if it stops making sense to you as long as it is making sense listen to me and if it stops making sense please stop me we are saying there are two things here one is the verb and then something else so this when we are when we are representing the structure in third bare part verb is only responsible for verb it's not responsible for anything else therefore it's not carrying any s and i wanted that this is not a typo or anything and i wanted it you to see that clearly that verb is only responsible for verb whatever this information is has to be represented or manifested somewhere else in the structure on the surface level when we speak the sentence this information shows up on the verb true but in the conceptual representation this information has to go somewhere else because this information belongs to somewhere else okay the the verb as a category can only contain verb so, so that this joint is what is what you see here okay now where does what is this information what what kind of information does this give us tell me what kind of information does this give us singular right everybody because if it is plural then you then you don't see this coming okay now the story of i is little bit different i don't want to mix everything okay the story of i is different we say i like pizza and he likes pizza right he is singular therefore likes but how about i like is i plural now this story is something else this is this is a different different story of english which is which which has something english specific for for us to understand and if you remember i'll i'll tell you that story later because let's understand this thing right now what you said is right this is a singular marker okay if we put here a plural pro, plural plural pronoun like they we get like if we put a singular one he then we get likes so this is a singular marker now singular marker is part of agreement it's not part of it's not the marker of tense see this thing singular marker is part of agreement not part of tense tense is present meaning it's present tense but physically it is absent see this thing there is no physical marker of present tense on this sentence so this is an agreement marker the tense marker is zero and the, you said something else something else which is very interesting why is this not an imperative sentence oh. no 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 you would I, i i thought that there is no tense in the whole sentence that was not true for to begin with imperative sentences are tenseless sentences so when we say there is no tense there is only there are only two types of sentences which takes no no tense in fact in fact the whole story is one see modal verbs do not take tense there are two types of this one is subjunctive right 
in English the same thing is called optative. You may have heard sentences like may you live long, right? May you live long. Those are the sentences of optative types. They are tenseless. When someone says may you live long, what is the tense here? And to understand whether tense is present or not, we need to know what is it that tense tells us. Tense only talks about time. If a sentence does not show any relation with time that is in the present, past or future, then we say such sentences are tenseless. Okay? Yes, if a sentence shows timing, then that sentence is in terms of present, past and future, then that is a sentence with tense. No, no big mystery here. So, this sentence I like pizza, is this present, forget about the markers right now. Is it talking about present time, past time or future time? It's, it talks about time, it, there, it does not talk about future. If I, if, wh why, you, why, you are, why it seems like no time is, is, is something else that I am going to show you. It does, it's not future, it is not past, it is present. Now, hold on. So, this is one which will be tenseless, may, king, may you live long. The other is imperatives. Things like go home. Okay? These are the kinds of sentences in natural languages which are called tenseless sentences. Others are going to be sentences with tense. So, this has present tense. The other, as the other thing is called aspect. I, I think we have discussed that with respect to uh, when we were discussing about tense and other agreement and uh, functional categories. There were several, several things that we discussed. Does anyone remember what, what are the things that we discussed here with aspect? Okay, continuous was one. What did continuous say? Now, continuous is, so aspect is different from tense because we can take any tense and any aspect and make a sentence, right? So, I can take a present tense and continuous aspect. I can say, I am eating pizza, right? Is this, is this continuous eating and present continuous? I can take a past tense and still make a continuous sentence. What would be the sentence? I have been. No, not have been is something else. Past and continuous. I was eating pizza. Okay? Past tense and continuous. Why is it continuous and, and still past? Because it is talking about something which was in progress at some moment of time in the past. That some moment of time is shared with, between speaker and the listener. Okay? But it is talking about continuation of something in some moment of time in the past. Therefore, I am eating pizza is present and I was eating pizza is past. So, one is that this distinction is about present and past which is timing, tense. Aspect is different from tense. So, aspect talks about the way things were happening which is that was continuous, ing represents continuous. And what is this, what is the aspect here in this sentence? The aspect here is habitual or the same thing is called uh, indefinite. Okay? The same thing is called indefinite Be because it is, there is some sort of regularity in it, there is some sort of indefiniteness in it, so we call it habitual also. So, I, I just want you to understand the terms. The, we use different terms with the same meaning. So, this the sentence, the reason why this sentence gives you the feeling that it is not, it is definitely not future, 
it's definitely not past and it gives you a sense of uh, not present is because of its indefinite nature. How do we differentiate between? Habitual and imperative. Yeah. That is because when you say I like pizza, you are talking about you are talking about something which is indefinite in, in the sense of a particular habit formation. Okay? When you are talking about imperative sentences like go home, it is not habitual, it is it's one time instruction. Go home. There, there is a categorical difference between the two. I, so when someone says, uh, go to Chennai next week, if I tell you go to Mumbai next week and if someone says, I live in Mumbai, do not you see a difference between the two types of sentences? One is talking about indefinite nature of a stay in the city of Mumbai. When someone says, I live in Mumbai, it means you do not know when I started living, you do not know when I am going to move to next city. At this moment in time, it is a continuous, it is a, it is a, there is some sort of regularity in my stay in Mumbai. It is not, when I say I am, a, I, I am living in Mumbai, I do not mean I am a visitor in Mumbai. See, see the point? That is called indefinite status coming from the verb, which comes through aspect, okay, which is indefinite. So, for this sentence, I like pizza or he likes pizza, the things are, this is present tense indefinite aspect, okay, singular agreement marker, all these kinds of information is associated with verb. Okay. All such things are associated with verb, but they have to be manifested somewhere else. In this structure, they have to be manifested somewhere else. Get my point? Now, can we can we move beyond the verb verb phrase? So, let me let me let me get a consensus here first. Are we clear about sentences with tense? Not not just this example. Take the examples of other sentences that I have given you. I am I am eating a pizza and I was eating pizza. With, with the help of all such sentences, do you understand the distinction between a sentence with tense and sentence without tense? That is number one, where, where I want your clarity. Number two, when we have sentences with tense, tense alone is not enough. What other information we get from the verb besides its timing is also things like continuous, habitual or perfected, somebody said I have been eating, I have been eating pizza. Is this present tense or past tense? Present tense and what, what aspect? It is it's, it's way too complicated, it is present, we are right, tense is present. Perfect is also something that we see because it gives us a sense that something is about in the in the recent past and then it gives continuity also. So, I have been eating. Okay, it is present perfect continuous. I, I do not want to complicate it to that far, but again like I have, uh, I have told you, I have promised you in the beginning, I will only point out things. Uh, later, when we are looking at more complicated stuff. It is not that I have been eating pizza is the sentence that you have heard for the first time. You may have written this sentence several times, you may have spoken these kinds of sentences several times and you know this sentence. What if I ask you to describe this sentence in terms of its tense and aspect and when you come up with the term present, perfect and continuous you will be lost with how can something be continuous and perfect both at the same time. So, we are only talking about 4 or 5. Some languages like Sanskrit have 12 different aspects. In some languages, 
certain aspects are not present in some languages lot many aspects are captured again number of aspects in a sentence visible and not so visible is language dependent thing is it is language specific thing which is part of parameter the fact that we know these distinctions categorically clear here there is a reason why someone will say i am eating right i have eaten and i have been eating there is a difference between all these sentences and those differences are not just subtle those differences are categorical you, you just listen to this is a very simple sentence i am eating i have eaten and i have been eating aren't the distinction categorical this is not subtle difference i am eating is present continuous i have eaten is present perfect i have been eating you you gave this sentence i didn't want to give you these things therefore i am only trying to stay with the simpler sentences because the important part is for us to understand the concepts not the sentences like i have been telling you we are not dealing with english we are dealing with these aspects so coming back to that do you see the difference between these three sentences i am eating i am repeating this again i am eating i have eaten and i have been eating i have eaten is an example of present perfect which is very different from i had eaten if you say i had eaten and i have what's the difference between i had eaten and i have eaten completed just now which means present perfect and past perfect both gives us a sense of perfection by perfection we mean completion of an action but the two gives us the reading is recent past that is just 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 now and remote past again human mind makes no mistake in figuring out or applying the notion of relativity in terms of time recent past and remote past are are relative terms as you can understand in a history in a human history 50 years may be recent time right but when we are talking about eating pizza 2 hours ago may be recent time 4 hours ago may be remote past 4 hours ago may be remote past with reference to 2 hours as recent past right the the point is human mind makes no mistake with these things it does its calculation perfectly nicely without us knowing about these things which again goes back to the point of knowledge of language that i have discussed with you get the get the point second uh so tense alone is not enough for these things so that is aspect then the, then there is a, a notion of agreement okay that is singular thing has to be agree with singular and plural thing has to be agree with plural these are the these are the 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 categories in language if you have to give a metaphor you know when we make a nice chicken or vegetables when you are served that thing in a plate what you see is a nice chicken dish what you don't see is the is the specific ingredients it might contain okay functional elements are like them that we don't see them with bare eyes okay for us to see that we need to know what such things are right similarly uh, so so these elements are functional elements in a line, in in language these are functional elements involved in making a sentence all right uh i wanted to make one more point and then go to the structure which is uh uh and and functional functional aspects of language have to be different from lexical aspects lexical markers that that is lexical elements like like pizza 
I are only visible things and they are going to carry functional elements. Sometimes and here is the here is the point that I want you to understand very carefully. Sometimes functional things like agreement marker, tense marker, aspect markers are going to be visible when they appear in their real faces, real forms, they are going to be visible. Sometimes they are not visible. That does not mean they are not there. Even in the tenseless sentence when we say there is no tense, we, we only mean that tense is zero. Okay? No tense is not really tense, but it leaves the possibility that there are sentences that are going to have tenses. Okay? Now, having said that, is, can I ask you final time that tense aspect makes sense to you now? Tense and aspect? Let us come here now. What you see beyond VP that we have added in this slide, which is IP. IP and like I have been telling you, sentence is called inflectional phrase. It is called inflectional phrase not because it is a nice term. All the functional elements that you have seen, tense, aspect, agreement, they are all inflections. Okay? Tense, aspect, agreement that you have seen here, they are all part of inflection. They are going they to be. The verb, that's, they are they, that's right. They they so inflect the verb. Yeah, the verb so. Absolutely right. They are in 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 simpler terms. We say these are they show up on the verb. Yeah. But technically, you can definitely say they inflect the verb. True. We only, we see them only when verbs are inflected. When verbs are not inflected, we we call that infinitive. To go to like. When verbs are inflected, then they do not remain infinitive. You, you, you understand this now? They do not call, they are not infinitive verbs. So, verbs get inflected and then we see they all of them are part of inflectional category. They are all inflectional category. Therefore, they are going to stay with inflection. And there has always been a discussion that why, which one is more important, tense, aspect or agreement. Okay? With reasons, people have argued for tense, with reasons people have argued for agreement and with reasons people have argued for inflection. Inflection being more important because inflection contains both tense and tense, aspect, agreement, everything together. Okay? Therefore, we call it inflectional phrase and in this inflectional phrase I have put this this is where we got we, we were stuck and we want to come back to this thing again I have put only present so it's it seems like inflection only means tense right but one can always put in the place of inflection inflection I the whole bunch of features tense aspect and agreement all of them are part of inflection and this was the reason, uh, let me close this thing by saying that, this was the reason why people said no, 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 no. we need to separate the things out otherwise it is going to be, it is it, not making much sense. So, tense is more important, aspect is more important or agreement is more important. Okay? Now, the, the, the more important discussion is not what is important and what is not important. The important point was they should manifest clearly. They should be represented clearly. I will show you one more structure which is going to be very nice and I invite you to see this thing in the book. It starts with inflection okay? and if you, if you can understand and if you are still with me with a structure, listen to me. It starts with inflection right? and then it goes to I and then it goes to T, TP then it again goes to aspect phrase and then it goes to agreement phrase, manifesting everything and then comes VP. See the, see the point? So, there are two ways of doing it, either you, either, either you, you project everything else 
or you just project i and then vp in both the cases i know we need to stop in both the cases where do you see vp coming in vp is what in the sentence complement of i okay vp is the complement of i and this should show you what we have been discussing in terms of subject and predicate okay and we will we'll continue our discussion more where do you see subject subject you, you don't see it so far and i have tried to put it there subject is actually the specifier of the sentence remember when we discussed subject and predicate we said subject is outside the predicate it becomes and it's it it's it's higher up it becomes the specifier of the sentence okay we'll we'll continue from this slide uh, tomorrow and we'll discuss more where i'll show you this thing that how a bigger subject is represented okay